Hi right, all, this is our first tutorial video on uh, using imagery from Google Earth or Google Maps to create a three-dimensional height field image in Rhino. So we're going to need uh, a browser to, to view Google Earth and we're going to need Rhino and we're going to need Photoshop. Um, I'm going to choose from a list of locations uh, the Grand Canyon, United States and I'm going to just copy that location into Google Maps and Satellite View. Close this sidebar. And I'm going to turn off labels. And then just zoom into any part of the image that you find particularly interesting or attractive or whatever. Uh, scale doesn't matter, file format doesn't matter, so anything works at this point. I'm going to hit the print screen button on my keyboard to capture an image of my entire screen. Then in Photoshop, I'm going to create a new document in millimeters. 200 by 200. Okay. I'm using uh, Photoshop Creative Suite 6, by the way. Um, but if you're using CS5, that's also fine. Uh, nothing should be different. It just might look a little bit different, but everything, all the content should be the same. Then I'm just going to hit Control V, which will paste the image from Google Earth into the Photoshop document. Just going to move this image around to where it fits. Um, maybe even scale it up a little bit. Okay, that's fine. So this is the image I'll use to build the height field in Rhino. Um, one thing about height field is it's only going to use the uh, sort of luminance values, the sort of the dark and the light values. Uh, so color is largely ignored. So we can preview this effect by just hitting Control U. Um, which will bring up the hue saturation menu and sliding saturation down to minus 100 which essentially just desaturates the image. So this is the only kind of information that the height field command in Rhino is going to be processing. So we can then save as JPEG Large file, that's fine. Open Rhino 4. Going to use large objects millimeters. Okay, before I create the height field, I'm going to just draw a rectangle uh, to, uh, to outline where the height field is going to go. So I can do that either by clicking the rectangle button here or typing R-E-C-T, rectangle. And that's going to go from 0, 0 to 200, 200. So this is the same size as the Photoshop document. Now I'm going to do the height field. Let's type HE, it should pop up. Select your image. And make sure you have object snap on. 
and click from this endpoint to the other endpoint. Uh, I'm going to keep this the same um, 50 by 50 sample points, 20 millimeters, and control points at sample locations. I can't see anything from the top view, but if we set view, right click and set view to perspective. You can see that it's created a three-dimensional geometry. We're going to want to click the middle mouse wheel and the pop-up menu comes up. Click shaded viewport so we can see the geometry better. Uh, one thing I also generally do is to turn off the surface ISO curves. So you can see this is our height field representation of this image. Of course it's not uh, geographically accurate at all or topographically accurate. Um, it's just a representation of the level of gray values in the image. Now there's several ways we can make adjustments to uh, the way this height field is working. One is by adjusting the geometry in Photoshop. Um, we currently have a very uh, sort of monotone, um, bland gray geometry, uh, but if we adjust the contrast and the brightness, we can create a more uh, sort of dynamic geometry with the height field. Uh, one way is using curves, which you get to by hitting Control M. Or going to image adjustments curves and this is a mathematical or graphical uh, display of the color values that are present in the image. So we can drag these points to create greater contrast for example We can also do levels, control L. We can control the output, making the entire image darker or brighter. In this case, it's more like washed out. We can also adjust the general brightness and contrast under image, adjustments, brightness, contrast. and save this image again as a JPEG and call it Grand Canyon 2. Now if we move this height field over and using the same settings make a new height field with the second geometry. And then we can easily compare. A greater contrast in the image creates a greater contrast in the 3D model. So while this one, this first one was more flat, there's more uh, Z-axis changes going on in the second moment.